So the topic for today's presentation is the Paris system for reporting urinary cytology. Now, as we know, the use of certain terms like suspicious, indeterminate, and atypical create confusion amongst urologists as well as the patients who have access to their reports these days. So it is imperative for us to have a standardized terminology. Now, the move to standardization began with the Bethesda system for reporting of cervical cytology, which was initiated in 1988. Then, we, then there was a standardized reporting for thyroid, which is the Bethesda system, which came into force since 2017. Similarly, for salivary leomoplasms, we have the Milan system and we have the Paris system for urinary cytology. Now, the idea for Paris system was conceived at the International Academy of Cytology Congress, which was held in May 2013 in Paris. It was led by Dr. Dorothy Rosenthal uh, and Dr. Eva Wojcik. It comprised of a total 49 members and their ultimate goal was detection of high-grade urothelial carcinoma. Now, why their goal was uh, for the detection of high-grade urothelial carcinoma, we shall see further. Now, this is what the Paris system comprises of. They tell us about the cytopreparatory techniques that should be used, the pathogenesis of urothelial carcinoma, the adequacy criteria, the various categories under which we can give our reports, the ancillary techniques, and the clinical management. Now, before going to the Paris system, there are certain points which are to be noted while we take history of the patient. Firstly, as usual, we take the demographic data. Then it is important to know the type of sample that is collected. It can be collected via voiding. It can be a catheterized specimen. It can be collected uh, uh, from cystoscopy or by urethral washings. Similarly, it can be a ureteric sample or it can be because of the, uh, from the ileal conduit. Similarly, we should also note for the symptoms of the patient, whether the patient has pain, burning, micturition, if there is hematuria, then as we know, certain occupations are more prone for development of bladder carcinoma. So occupational history is also important. Certain imaging findings that is on radiology, whether there is a presence of mass, whether there is bladder thickening, etc. should be noted. Any history of malignancy or prior treatment taken has to be noted. Also, cystoscopy if done the findings if for the presence of mass has to be noted. Then the nature of sample, that is the quantity of urine that is collected, its color, whether it is pale yellow or reddish because of hematuria, and also the consistency, if it is clear, whisked, should be noted. Time of collection and time of receiving is important, as urine undergoes degeneration after it is collected, so it is important that the time of collection and receiving as well as processing is limited. Now there are certain uh, techniques or preparations which are given which are suggested by the Paris system, we can make direct smears, that is the urine sample that is collected is centrifuged for 10 minutes at 1200 rotations per minute and we used albuminized or charged slides for better attachment of cells. Then there can be wet fixation, that is when the urine sample is collected, it is centrifuged, the slide is made and it is directly put in a fixative solution which is mostly ethanol and then it is transferred to the lab for staining purpose. Then we have wet fixation with air drying. It is similar to wet fixation, but after fixing it with ethanol solution, it is air dried and then sent to the lab for staining. As we know, we mostly use PAP staining or the NGG GIMSA stains for preparation of urine slides. Then we have spray fixation. In spray fixation, the slide, we have a spray fixative, which is uh, commercially available. Then the slide is air dried, but before staining, it is imperative that the carbo wax, which is a content of the spray fixation, is removed. Otherwise, what happens is, as we can see in this image, as we can see in this image, the nuclear chromatin details are not very clearly visualized and the slide appears to have a thin um, waxy coating over it. That is because of the spray fixation and therefore it is imperative to remove this coating. We use ethanol and water and later the slide can be stained. Similarly, we have liquid based fixation that is the thin prep and sure path techniques which are covered in detail in previous presentations. 
we also have the filtration and cytofugation uh, cytocentrifugation based preparations in filtration methods there is a membrane filter which is used but these are very labor intensive so they are not uh, used nowadays we also have cell block preparations now this is how a slide will look if it is processed via millipore filtration we can see that short path and thin path prep preparations yield higher cellularity and they give better visualization of the cells as compared to cytocentrifugation as well as millipore filtration also between thin prep and short path we can see if the same sample is uh, subjected to short path as well as thin prep short path yields a higher cellularity with uniform distribution of cells and better preserved architecture so it is more preferred than the thin prep preparations now coming to the adequacy criteria the parasist of mentions that because it is not widely used there is more validation which is required but still they have given this adequacy criteria which appears to be quite uh, complicated but they have mentioned four characteristics so firstly we look for the cytomorphology of the cells if there is presence of atypical or suspicious or any malignant cells then directly the sample becomes adequate if not then we see for the collection type if the specimen has been instrumented then they have given criteria that is 20 well visualized well preserved cells per 10 high power field can be adequate but if we have 10 to 20 well visualized well preserved cells per 10 high power field then we can call it satisfactory but limited by low cellularity similarly if there are less than 10 well visualized and well preserved cells per 10 high power field it appears to be unsatisfactory or non diagnostic so that was about the cellularity now if the specimen has been collected by voiding we just see if it is the adequate volume then we put it in adequate criteria if not then it is labeled as inadequate now these are the categories under which the reports can be given firstly there is negative for high grade urothelial carcinoma then we have atypical urothelial cells suspicious for high grade urothelial carcinoma high grade urothelial carcinoma itself and low grade urothelial neoplasms now before going into the individual categories it is important to understand the pathogenesis of urothelial carcinoma as we know there are two distinct pathways one is the papillary pathway or the hyperplasia pathway and the other is the non papillary or dysplasia pathway now hyperplasia pathway is characterized by cdk and 2a mutations which is a genetically stable pathway and it leads to development of low grade urothelial carcinoma it is Uh, it has high recurrence rate and it can progress to high grade carcinoma secondly we have a dysplasia pathway which is genetically unstable it gives rise to high grade carcinoma as well as carcinoma in c2 and these have high recurrence rate but they progress to invasive carcinoma stages now what was historically believed that low grade urothelial carcinoma can at some point turn into high grade urothelial carcinoma but now it is known that the non papillary pathways have tp53 mutations which is almost mutually exclusive to the ras mutations so they say that the majority of papillary pathways which occur because of fgfr3 mutations never possess the ras pathway and almost never progress to high grade carcinoma so it is now found out that the low grade carcinoma rate of progression to high grade carcinoma is less than 5% and therefore it is believed that these two pathways are completely separate so low grade carcinoma is not carcinoma in first place it can be labeled as low grade neoplasia that is why the ultimate goal of paris system was to first detection of high grade urothelial carcinoma so anything that is not a high grade has been put in negative for high grade urothelial carcinoma now coming to individual categories first we have the negative for high grade urothelial carcinomas <clears throat> the components which are present in the specimen to be labeled as negative are benign urothelial glandular and squamous cells benign urothelial tissue fragments and urothelial sheets or clusters then changes that can be associated with lithiasis changes that can be associated with viral infection especially the polyoma virus and the post therapy effects we will see each one of it in detail now these are the superficial umbrella cells they are large as we can see they are multinucleated they have a foamy vacuolated cytoplasm their nucleus is round pale having fine powdery chromatin with a conspicuous nucleoli these are large superficial cells 
and the multinucleation is a result of instrumentation. Similarly, we have clusters of smaller cells. Now these have a lower NC ratio, but if we see here, these appear to have a higher NC ratio. That is because they have less amount of cytoplasm. But if we see the nuclear details, they are round cells with pale chromatin. There is no hyperchromatism. So these are clusters of smaller cells which are benign, normally found in urine. Similarly, we have a small uh, true tissue fragments. They form a large umbrella-like cover over the superficial urothelial cells. These, if we see, have a prominent cytoplasmic edge to, uh, at their periphery. This is imperative because it forms a barrier between the toxic urine and blood. So these are the superficial urothelial or umbrella cells. Next, we have the intermediate cells. They dissociate very easily. So they are found singly as well as there can be few clusters present. They have a cytoplasmic tail. So they are known as cercariform cells and they have a small nucleus. Now, sometimes there can be presence of reactive umbrella, umbrella cells. These are similar to the superficial cells, but as we can see, the nuclei show very prominent nucleoli, but they are still round without any hyperchromatism. So they are reactive. Also presence of inflammatory cells is the clue. Next, we can also have benign squamous cells. Now, as we can see here, this is a superficial cell, umbrella cell with foamy cytoplasm round to oval multinucleated and it has fine powdery chromatin with prominent nucleoli. These are the benign squamous cells, especially can be seen in female patients if the specimen has been obtained via voiding. It can be from the perineum or the urethra. If these are seen in reproductive age group, then it can be considered normal. But if the age of the patient is postmenopausal, then it is important to mention these as it can be from an underlying high-grade urothelial carcinoma showing squamous metaplasia. But if we look closely, the nuclei do not show any atypical features. So that is why we label them as benign squamous cells. We can also have glandular cells, which are clusters, cohesive group of cells showing round to oval, uh, chrom uh, nucleus having pale chromatin, there is no hyperchromasia and there, there is no nuclear overlapping. So these can be seen in endometriosis of the ureter, again in reproductive age group commonly seen. Then there is metaplasia of infective etiology in which is known as cystitis cystica or cystitis glandularis. It can appear as clusters, it can appear as linear pattern which resemble the endocervical cells or it can appear as a tightly cohesive clusters. Now in all these we have to see the nuclear features and also the benign nature of the nucleus. If it is not hyperchromatic with no irregular contours, irrespective of their origin, they are placed in negative for high grade urothelial carcinoma. Similar with the renal tubular epithelial cells, they can be histiocytic type, they can present as clusters or they can present as cast. These are nothing but they just um, tell us an underlying renal failure, but they are not positive for malignancy, so they are put in negative for high grade urothelial carcinoma. Next, we have the benign urothelial tissue fragments. These resemble papillary clusters as we can see here, or they can be as tight, co tight cohesive groups. But again, if we look at the nuclear features carefully, they have a pale chromatin with prominent nucleoli. They have a sharply demarcated borders. So they are benign in nature. Previously, it was, it was uh, assumed that they are some way or the other related to the high grade urothelial carcinomas, but recent studies show their benign nature. Similarly, this is a case where it was wrongly labeled as high-grade urothelial carcinoma, but on biopsy and excision later, it showed that this was just a uh, hyperplasia with papillary hemangioma. So what are these, the papillary clusters? And they do not show any nuclear overlapping. And also what appear as these fibrovascular core was nothing but the subepithelial hemangioma. So it is very important to note the nuclear details. Next, coming to clusters or sheets of urothelial cells, they resemble the two, true tissue fragments what we had seen. But again, if we see closely, these are monolayered sheets and they have presence of windows. So they can be distinguished 
from to true tissue fragments by this presence of windows. Similarly, there is no ATP and no nuclear hyperchromasia. If we see this, it is showing cytoplasm which has become opaque. That is mainly because of squamous metaplasia. But the nuclei again are benign looking. So these are nothing but clusters or sheets of urothelial cells which can be benign. So put in negative for high grade urothelial carcinoma category. Now what happens in, uh, in cases of nephrolithiasis? We can have tight clusters, some nuclei showing hyperchromasia, nuclear overlapping with prominent nucleoli. There can be presence of calcium concretions or can be evidence of stone itself. Now in this image, if we can see, the nuclei appear to be hyperchromatic. But because we know the clinical history that this, is, this patient had a history of nephrolithiasis, it is still put in negative for high-grade urothelial carcinoma. Similarly, in this image, if we compare, these are the normal superficial urothelial cells with foamy cytoplasm and pale, uh, pale nuclei having uh, with pale nuclei. And here we can see the nuclei are hyperchromatic. But again, because we have a history, it is put in negative for high-grade urothelial carcinoma. If the history was not known, this could have been labeled as atypical urothelial cells. But in case there is some reason for this atypia, then this much hyperchromasia is acceptable. Next, coming to the viral cytopathic effects. Now, as we know, the viruses which can infect the bladder are HCV and the polio polioma virus. Now, there is a characteristic homogeneous basophilic glassy nuclear inclusions when it in cases of polyoma virus, as we can see in these images. Now, after a certain time, there is dissolution of chromatin, so they give a fi fiber web-like appearance. In this image, we can see there is hypercellularity, but we can see pale as well as light-colored cells. The, that is because of the glassy basophilic nuclear inclusions as seen in this higher power image. If we see here this image as well as this image, we can compare them and we can see that in this image, the hypercellularity is more and all the cells appear darker as we can see here on higher power. So this is a high grade urothelial carcinoma. But if we see pale as well as dark with glassy homogeneous inclusions, then that is because of the polyoma virus. Then treatment effects. If there has been intravesical BCG administration, there can be granulomatous inflammation. And we can see the granulomas. And if we look closely, we can also see the Langhan type of giant cells. Now this multinucleation of Langhan's giant cells should not be confused with the multinucleation of the superficial cells. As we had seen, the superficial cells have a pale powdery chromatin and their multinucleation is located at one pole, uh, which is different from that of the Langhans type giant cells. Then the radiation induced changes include cytomegaly, nucleomegaly and polychromasia. There is no uh, increased NC ratio, whereas chemotherapy changes have increased NC ratio with nuclear enlargement and hyperchromasia. Next, there can be presence of seminal vesicle cells. This is more commonly seen in older patients after digital rectal examination or prostatic massage if we collect a specimen after these maneuvers have been done. They are bizarre looking cells, but again, the presence of lipofusion pigment as depicted by the arrow as well as the presence of sperm is an uh, identification for identifying the seminal vesicle cells. So should, this should not be labeled as atypical cells. Then there are certain, uh, the, in certain uh, procedures like bla bladder diversion urine, where there is a ileal conduit or a neobladder formation in which if cystectomy has been done, there is the ileum has been uh, anastomosed with the ureters or the urethra. So in such cases, we get degenerated enteric cells. As we can see, this is a superficial urothelial cell, which is a large polygonal cell. But these degenerated enteric cells are small, round, with prominent nucleoli. And they have these intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies, which are known as melamed Wolinska bodies, which is a characteristic feature of the bladder diversion urine. Similarly, we can have the enteric cells in clusters, which look atypical, but if we look closely, they are columnar type of cells and they have smaller nuclei. There is no nucleomegaly. 
Next category is atypical for urothelial cells. Atypical urothelial cells. These cells have mild to moderate cytologic atypia. The atypia is known for its cytologic characteristics and not morphologic atypia. Like the presence of clusters is not atypical, but the cytologic atypia for which criteria are being given. Major criteria required is the uh, higher NC ratio, which has to be more than 0.5. That is 50% of the cell volume has to be occupied by the nucleus. And the, any one of the minor criteria has to be fulfilled. Nuclear hyperchromasia, irregular nuclear membranes, and irregular coarse clumped chromatin. Now the green arrow shows monolayered clusters of superficial cells. As we can see, these are round with foamy cytoplasm and round uh, pale nuclei. But the red arrow shows us atypical cells in which we can see there is nucleomegaly and they have irregular nuclear contours. So one major essential criteria and one minor criteria is fulfilled. So we call them as atypical urothelial cells. Now these are some images of atypical urothelial cells. As we can see, there is nuclear megaly with irregular nuclear contours. But again, there is no hyperchromasia or there is no irregular clumped chromatin. Similarly, in these clusters, we can see nuclear megaly with irregular chromatin, irregular nuclear uh, contours. In these cells, these appear to be degenerated, but the nuclear chromatin cannot be well visualized. So they are put in atypical urothelial cell category. Similarly, here we can see there is nuclear uh, nucleomegaly, hyper uh, nucleomegaly with irregular nuclear contours. These are again degenerated cells where the chromatin is not visualized properly, so they are placed in atypical urothelial cells. Even in these, all the cells do not show nuclear nucleomegaly, but this cell shows nucleomegaly with irregular nuclear contours, so it is placed in atypical for urothelial cells. It can be compared to that of a superficial urothelial cell seen here. Next category we have is suspicious for high-grade urothelial carcinoma. It, is, it includes specimens which quantitatively fall short for high-grade urothelial carcinoma. Now, the required diagnostic criteria is nuclear high NC ratio that is 0.5 to 0.7 and moderate to severe hyperchromasia is essential and at least one of the irregular columbi chromatin or marked irregular nuclear membranes should be visible. Now as we can see here this is a large cell having higher nucleocytoplasmic ratio showing hyperchromasia. Similarly in these cells we can see large cells with nucleomegaly and hyperchromasia here we can also visualize the irregular clumpy chromatin. But as we have said that these fall quantitatively short for high-grade urothelial carcinoma. So just the presence of one cell makes it a suspicious for high-grade and not high-grade. Here we have six cells, but not all the cells are showing that much nucleomegaly with hyperchromasia. Again, here there are four cells, but the nuclear chromatin details are not very well visualized, but it is definitely suspicious for high-grade carcinoma. Similarly, here we can see one cell that is showing irregular clumped chromatin. If there were more than five cells of uh, similar looking cells, we would have uh, placed them in high-grade urothelial carcinoma. Similarly, here these are the normal uh, squamous cells. And here we can see there is irregular clumped chromatin, nucleomegaly with irregular nuclear contours. And here also the same thing, the nuclei is showing irregular contours with hyperchromasia and irregularly clumped chromatin. But again, there is only presence of two or three such cells. So it is placed in suspicious for high-grade urothelial carcinoma. Now here if we see, some cells are showing nucleomegaly with irregular nuclear contours, but there is no hyperchromasia. So these are not suspicious. These are just put in atypical for urothelial cells. Here also we have, these are the benign squamous cells and we have just one cell which is devoid of cytoplasm. So it can be because of degeneration or it could be what we saw the spider web like cell because of the viral cytopathic effect. But because the degeneration appears to be more prominent, we put them in atypical urothelial cell category. Similarly, in this we can see cluster of clustering of cells, but they have proper round nuclei with prominent nucleoli. So these are nothing but the normal urothelial cells showing some degenerative changes. So these are put in negative for high-grade urothelial carcinoma category. Now coming to the high-grade urothelial carcinoma, 
it should have at least 5 to 10 abnormal cells as we saw the suspicious category was just falling short of high grade urothelial carcinoma so if we have at least 5 abnormal cells it can be put directly in high grade urothelial carcinoma here the nc ratio has to be 0.7 or greater the nucleus has moderate to severe hyperchromasia with markedly irregular nuclear membranes and having coarse clumped chromatin as in this images we can see the malignant cells showing fulfilling all the criteria if it is lightly stained it has to be compared with the uh, background lymphocytes or background benign urothelial cells this image shows us a very high mc ratio cell showing irregular nuclear contours with irregular clumped chromatin and this is the necrosis clinging to the malignant cells similarly we can see the nuclear details which are very well visualized in these images there can also be presence of mitosis so all this comes under high grade urothelial carcinoma now high grade urothelial carcinoma cells the malignant cells with squamous differentiation as we can see keratinized cytoplasm with atypical large hyperchromatic looking nuclei and high grade urothelial carcinoma showing glandular differentiation the clusters of cells or individual singly scattered cells showing focal glandular differentiation these should be labeled as high grade urothelial carcinoma with squamous differentiation or high grade urothelial carcinoma with glandular differentiation now coming to low grade urothelial neoplasm it comprises of low grade epithelial urothelial neoplasm the low grade papillary urothelial neoplasm includes urothelial papilloma papillary urothelial neoplasm of low malignant potential and low grade papillary urothelial carcinoma now the diagnostic criteria given for uh, low grade urothelial neoplasm are three dimensional cellular papillary clusters with presence of fibrovascular cores the presence of fibro fibrovascular core is imperative now these images shows us the papillary cluster and presence of fibrovascular core can be well appreciated here so this is labeled as low grade urothelial neoplasm similarly here we can see the 3d papillary clusters with presence of fibrovascular core which is not well visualized in this uh, slide but if we make a cell block we can see there are fibrovascular cores present now in this again if we see there this appears to be a 3d cluster and there is presence of certain rbcs but here we are not sure if that is a fibrovascular core so this has to be labeled as negative for high grade and a comment suggesting that it could be a low grade urothelial neoplasm and we need ifc or histopath for confirmation here also we can see there are papillary 3d clusters but again because of the overlapping or presence of artifact we are not able to see the fibrovascular cores so it is negative for high grade and a comment suggesting low grade urothelial neoplasm here also these are the circariform cells which we had seen the intermediate urothelial cells but they show high cellularity but there is no papillary cluster or there is no presence of fibrovascular core so this because of the high cellularity cannot be just new, negative for high grade and we have to make a comment suggesting that it could be a low grade neoplasm similarly here there is there appears to be nucleomegaly but again we cannot be sure and similarly here there few cells show nucleomegaly but they are rounded and there is no hyperchromasia so they are definitely not high grade but we cannot just label them as negative for high grade so we put a comment suggesting that it could be low grade urothelial neoplasm now there are certain non urothelial tumors starting with the squamous cell carcinoma we can see the keratinized cell these nuclei appear to be atypical showing irregularly clumped chromatin and nucleomegaly similarly here a nucleate squamous cells can be seen this is keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma in non keratinized what we see is basophilic uh, cytoplasm with slightly angulated hyperchromatic nuclei compare it with the superficial uh, urothelial cells next they can be adenocarcinoma these are nothing but clusters of cells with eccentrically placed cytoplasm uh, eccentrically placed nucleus showing vacuolar uh, single cytoplasmic vacuole suggesting it to be an adenocarcinoma but there is they can be colonic type they can be signet ring type or there can be clear cell adenocarcinoma showing hobnailing 
with a centrally placed nucleus having prominent nucleoli. Next, coming to the extrapulmonary small cell carcinoma, as we can see, there are clusters of cells showing higher NC ratio with fine powdery smudged chromatin. Similarly, here we can see nuclear overlapping, but this has to be confirmed via IHC, that is CD56, demonstrating its uh, neuroendocrine lineage. Then there are certain other tumors which can again be identified like the leomyosarcoma showing spindle cells having buckled nucleus. Then the angiosarcoma showing large plump cells with large ovoid nucleus with uh, vesicular chromatin and prominent nucleoli. Then coming to DLVCL, we have uh, medium to small cells with large round nuclei showing uh, pale chromatin with prominent nucleoli mostly at the periphery. Then there can be presence of metastatic melanoma in which the pigment can be made out. Then lobular carcinoma breast mets can be sometimes found. They, they can be found in a typical Indian file arrangement or we can also get ductal carcinoma mets as large spherules showing nuclear atypia. Now coming to the ancillary studies, there are cell-based tests and there are liquid-based tests. Cell-based tests are performed in cytology laboratories. Liquid-based tests can be performed at the office of a urologist. Now coming to UFISH, which is the most commonly used ancillary technique. As we can see the schematic representation, there are four single standard DNA probes. Three that is the uh, red, yellow and the the red, green and the blue one are the chromosome enumeration probes that is 3, 7 and 17. And this spectrum gold is that of a locus specific identifier which targets the NP21 on P16 genome. Now how do we analyze? A gain of more than two signals for more than two chromosomes of 3, 7, 17 as we can see here instead of two signals we have four signals for uh, 17 spectrum also for red spectrum we have three signals so this is gain of more than two signals for more than two chromosomes or there can be loss of both copies of 9p21 here there is loss of one copy so it is uh, interpreted as positive fish and there has to be more than four cells out of the 25 cells which are visualized showing the gain or there have to be more than 12 cells out of the 25 cells which show 0 NP21. This is just a reactive state in which all the signals are appear to be hyperamplified. Next coming to the this. This is a reactive cell as we had seen. It has a multinucleation. It has pale powdery chromatin with prominent nucleoli. If we see here, the signals appear to be more in number, but there is no unbalanced number of cells. Also, the gold spectrum is identified. So this is nothing but a reactive cell. Similarly, here on cytology, it is very difficult to call them reactive. But if we do a fish, all the signals are very well visualized with the presence of gold spectrum. So it can be labeled as reactive urothelial cells. Now, these appear to be suspicious on cytology, but if we do a fish, we can see that we can only visualize red color and there is no gold color spectrum. So, there is deletion of the uh, locus specific identifier and also there is unbalanced proliferation of the red signal. So, it is a positive fish. Similarly, in these cells, we can see there is unbalanced proliferation with loss of the gold signal. So, these are the examples of positive U fish. Coming to the immunocyte, it combines three fluorescent monoclonal antibodies, two which give the green fluorescent and one which gives the red fluorescent. Now, at least one or red fluorescent, if it is observed, it is labeled as positive. Then the liquid-based tests are not generally used because there are no specific studies to prove their efficacy and also we do not know if they actually add value for the patients. So, they are not used nowadays only new fish has been used on a large scale now what does the urologist actually do with our report so we have these categories now certain like if we give them as uh, unsatisfactory or negative for, or up to atypical urothelial cells then the risk of malignancy changes and the management appears to be clinical follow-up as needed by the patient depending upon its history and also the use of ancillary techniques can be uh, 
it can be given by the urologist himself then again as the category increases a more aggressive follow up is needed it there can be a biopsy which can be done and cystoscopic examination has to be done for such patients now amongst all this it is important just to remember the atypical urothelial cell category suspicious for high grade urothelial cell category and high grade urothelial cells as we can see uh, as we have seen that the number of atypical cells in high grade urothelial carcinoma is 5 to 10 if it is less than 5 then we have to put it in suspicious category there is higher nc ratio in all of them and also hyperchromasia irregular nuclear membrane and coarse clumped chromatin have to be well visualized if everything is present then we put it in high grade now what do we understand by this it uh, high grade urothelial carcinoma is the main one that matters and that therefore everything that is not high grade has been put in negative for high grade carcinoma the diagnosis of atypia should not be used as a waste basket and everything that looks atypical should not be put in the atypical urothelial cell category the low grade urothelial neoplasm is a new diagnostic category and its presence uh, and its diagnosis is given if we have a 3d papillary clusters and the presence of fibrovascular pores again all malignant cells are not urothelial carcinoma as we have seen that there can be mets there can be non urothelial uh, malignant cells in the specimen also also the paris system mentions that further studies are needed for validation and as and when we go on using the paris system it will give us further better results these are some of the references that were used thank you